you're hearing a lot about deep seek I want you to bear with me here for a second because there's a different way to look at what's going on here the skinny is that all of a sudden there's artificial intelligence that a superior capability being made out of China and you've got Oracle and all these major technology companies who are planning on building miniature nuclear reactors which use uranium to power all of their operations in the new technology world now China comes along and says well, wait a minute, we just did even better than that. And they did do better because they had a bunch of people testing all the different chatbots and all the different artificial intelligence systems to find out which one's giving the best, most accurate answers, et cetera, et cetera. All that kind of fun stuff. Don't get into that. It's a bottomless pit. All the details about that. But the point is the skinny how it's going to affect you is that things like uranium suddenly took a hit for humanity. It's a great thing for you, for society. All of a sudden, it's possible to produce all this artificial intelligence and the benefits that come from it without having the constant input of energy from new nuclear powered reactors, et cetera, et cetera. They're doing it a lot less expensively, a lot more efficiently, and it is actually better in terms of the actual output coming from the deep seek model. It is superior in a few ways to chat GPT, et cetera, et cetera. And what I want to say to most people is take the win. This is great. Society now has got closer to artificial intelligence without the inglorious demands of the input of energy and all the money that's required and all the time that's required. We've just made a massive leap. This whole technological age is a massive leap. Then we just made another massive leap because China is saying, look, we're doing what we're all trying to do, but we're doing it quicker, better, and cheaper. All of a sudden, humanity has access to that information that it can be done for less than hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars like a lot of these companies are pretending is required which is not but you also have to understand that right now is a time of a lot of moving pieces especially with what's going on with the new administration there's so many parts moving in different directions at once that I don't think it's a time yet to take any kind of action any adamant decision I'll buy that that'll go up in price you need to sort of step back Take a moment, catch your breath. This is all going to pass. It's a shock, and the shock usually passes in a few days, and then you can sit back and get a better idea of where you are at. With the big technology report that I just put out a number of days ago, a big part of that, and I said it here and here and here and in this part too, I said that these stocks involved in the new technology world are all overvalued right now because there's such a mania everybody suddenly learned about new technologies and drones and advanced robotics and quantum computing and all of a sudden they're like i need to invest in this because it's going to go up in price a lot no people are just piling into one side of the raft some companies will emerge most will go bankrupt just like i tell you at the turn of the century how many automobile companies were there in the united states over 1,800 of them. And with the exception of a few, a very few, big three, they all went bankrupt in the following years or bought out and went bankrupt, dissolved their operations, etc. There's just all of these companies involved in the space and people think, wow, the automobile is going to be a big thing. So buy any stock that's involved in the automobile industry. No, most people almost all well over 99 percent of people lost 100 percent of their investment that's how great the automobile was we still use the car to this day but people don't understand how businesses work when they invest in stocks they invest in ideas you don't want to invest in an idea the purpose of a business is to make money you want to invest in a company in the right space at the right time with a good idea that is also selling something for value that people are demanding they're having an increasing footprint. They're taking on more market share. But you have to watch for this stuff because at first, like now, most companies are going to be overvalued because they already poured their money into it. And there needs to be a fade back, a little bit of a drop in price. And that's a lot of what I talked about in the tech report. A lot of these companies are great. They're going to come down 10% in price before they go up thousands of percent. In the wild card in all of this, I say that it's a arms race in terms of artificial intelligence china versus america china has showed us that they're way ahead of us and they're kicking our butts do we use their technology or do we find reasons why there's a threat to national security and now you have to go back to 
the companies in America that are building the same artificial intelligence technology. And no matter what, it's always going to get a lot less expensive. Just like your washing machine, it's a lot more efficient, a lot better, things improve. The first car probably made a lot of pollution compared to cars nowadays. Things get better and artificial intelligence will be most expensive at first. Next day, it'll be less. Next day, it'll be less. Just like a computer always decreases in price. They make them less expensively. You can pay less to get the same thing. It's deflationary. Technologies are deflationary. And any artificial intelligence is going to be tremendously deflationary. Any way you think that inflation is going to go up, artificial intelligence is making everything so much more efficient that drive down against inflation is actually overpowering all the forces that are pushing inflation higher. So a lot of the decisions of the Trump administration towards China with this technology will be very relevant in terms of how this all plays out. Now, I didn't invest in uranium because of the need for more energy because of all this artificial intelligence and modern technologies. That was a part of it. It's a piece of an ingredient in a recipe. The reason I'm investing in uranium is the same reason I'm investing in lithium. And it's the same reason I'm investing in gold as we pay for things that we've already spent. We need to create more American dollars to pay for that. And so that's what you'll notice that every government has always, always done, even though they've always acted like they're fighting against it. Oh, there's a debt ceiling crisis, a debate about paying government workers. It's all just smoke and mirrors. What they're really doing is just trying to act like they're doing the right thing before we take a breath and then we print more money. And as you print more money, if you double the monetary supply, the value of each dollar will be worth half as much. That's why your grandfather's house that he bought for $20,000 is worth $400,000 now. It only increased in nominal price, but it didn't increase in intrinsic value at all. It just is something that now costs more, like a loaf of bread. So in terms of military conflict, America and the Trump administration is not going to want China to have this win to have all this control, to have a superior technology that they made for a literal fraction of the price in a literal fraction of the time. That's not good. It's not a good look. It's not good optics. So all of a sudden there will probably be some concerns and a reason why you cannot use DeepSeek or TikTok or whatever they decide. We need to develop these technologies, artificial intelligence, advanced robotics, etc. We need to develop it in America. We want to be the leader in that, but also the entire society, the entire world needs to develop it together. And what happened with DeepSeek, that is actually a massive win for all of us. And no one's noticing that. Don't think about now, should we use DeepSeek? Should we not use DeepSeek? Yada, yada. Think about what does this mean? Now you're going to see differences in the way that the American companies work because they saw the Chinese company do it quicker and more easily. Now they're going to mimic that as well. They're going to find what are we missing? What can we do better to be more like the Chinese? But every country in the world is going to be benefiting from the rise of artificial intelligence, whether it's Mongolia or Denmark. It's not an American thing. The reason it's an American thing compared to China is because we are at a very delicate position with them right now. There's a thing that happens when you have 12 dogs and two of them are alpha males or the big dogs, the chance of them fighting is close to 100%. China is a rising power. America is the fading power. They need to fight. That's the only way this is going to play out because China wants to prove themselves. America wants to not lose their place in the world. This has happened before. Just look at history. Don't hear from me. Look at history. But the point is, this is a gift. Take the win. It's great for society. So anytime you see a massive mania like that, even though it's something that down the road will be great, like an automobile, but if everyone's buying or creating companies that build cars and everyone's buying that, then you're losing money as an investor because you are just throwing your money in with the crowd. The crowd always loses. If I tell you one thing that you take with you to your last day, keep that in mind. The crowd always loses. I even talk about that in my book, Up Thinking, about avoiding the crowds, because that is where a lot of the risk comes from. Because when 20 people are all trying to buy one thing to make money on it, if it keeps on going, great. But generally, most of those people lose money because if everyone jumped in at once, just like I said in my XRP warning video the other day, everybody, the guy who built this desk, my son, so many people on email are asking me about XRP all of a sudden and all at once. 
And I've seen this before. It's happened with lithium. It's happened with electric vehicles. It's happened with 3D printing. It's just everybody hears about something, then the news picks up on it and spreads the message. And then everybody thinks that investing is about buying the thing you heard about that could potentially be great. Most of these things that you're going to be talking about are priced for perfection. If a company says, we're working on a cure for cancer, you watch the stock price a lot of times it's acting as if they've already got the cure. But most biotech companies go out of business, they run out of money. It's a fact. Same with most mining companies too. And that's the value of picking good stocks by looking under the hood and understanding how much debt they have, how much money they make, what's their market share, where's the company going to go in five years, 10 years. You need to know all this stuff. You look at their balance sheet, their income statement, and then you know where a company's going to go, how long it can last, what kind of runway are we looking at. So with a lot of stuff right now, when there's too many moving pieces, you need to step back and assess the situation. Take time to not do anything. Sit in the quiet, turn off the lights, just sit there by yourself for half an hour at night, one night, and just think about things, let things come into your mind. Because right now, there's so many moving pieces and bouncing ping pong balls that it doesn't make sense for anyone to be making any massive decision or claim, just for example, the deep seek, and it hit the markets and it hit uranium stocks, and then all of a sudden, that shock will wear off. Maybe Trump administration, shuts them down from working in America, and all of a sudden everything's different, but you don't know. And the more you know, the more you can make the better decision. But right now, I don't think that you or I or anyone knows enough about how things are gonna go in the next even week to be able to say, here's what I'm gonna do. Here's how I'm gonna invest. If you get involved in a really fundamentally strong company, like the ones we talk about in the Peter Leeds newsletter, then you don't need to worry as much because the company itself is providing value and making value from that value. There's a growing demand, etc., etc. It's not that hard to find. It just takes an excessive amount of work. <laughs> so that's what we do for you. And it was Martha Beck who said, how you do anything is how you do everything. And I feel like what we do here, we do it really well. It's all about helping you avoid the risks, capture the big gains so that you can land on your feet, help the people you care about and be enriched. What's wrong with that? So please help support our channel just by clicking the like button even. Anything you can do because we definitely should be getting a lot more traffic, especially from the people who have listened to my message and then they tell me, here's how you helped me. Here's how much money I made because of you. And I stopped putting the testimonials on the sites because it's just a sales pitchy thing. So I stopped, but we still get so many testimonials almost every day, significant ones where people are avoiding bankruptcy, single moms paying their mortgage. We help a lot of people. We can help you too. It's just gotta be that you decide to let us help. <laughs> if you want to learn more from me, just join the Peter Leeds newsletter, peterleeds.com. Or if you want direct contact with me all the time, plus a special extra feature, a bunch of other benefits, and consider becoming a Peter Leeds insider at peterleeds.com slash insiders.